Hi, everyone, and welcome. Uh, good afternoon. It is still afternoon, right? Yes. Hi, I'm, and I'm Andrea Tarr. I'm the program director at SCAN, and welcome to Creative Conversations. And say hi to Donna Como. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything else you want to say, Donna? Of course. I thought you were going to talk about some of the uh, things we're going to do. But anyway, uh, good afternoon to everyone, of course. And today you will experience a very unique educational and, and entertaining opportunity where you'll learn about our special guest's journey to uncover his passion for the art of Italian cooking. Through his research, a little bit of undercover work and love for Italian food, he evolved into a self-taught mozzarella aficionado. I recently heard about his newly acquired love for mozzarella and wanted to share his tricks of the trade, you know, with all of you here at Creative Conversations. I would like you to meet a longtime family friend for over 40 years from my hometown of Dyka Heights, Brooklyn. Please join me in welcoming Dennis Farrell. Okay, Dennis, please join us and turn on your video. Oh, there he Hi, is. Hi, Dennis. Hello. Hi, Dennis. How are you? Dennis. Hi, thank you so much for being here today with us. You're before, welcome. before we get started with the program, we thought even before the, uh, your demo, we would ask you a couple of questions. And I would like to just put out like sort of a dual part question, two part. How did you get involved with homemade mozzarella and why, why mozzarella? Well, I love mozzarella. A restaurant I used to go to, I still go to it. Uh, they had, I thought they had the most delicious mozzarella. So I looked into it and uh, I got them, I persuaded them into showing me the technique. And uh, from there I went, I went a couple of times and made the mozzarella for them. It wasn't as good as theirs, but uh, then I started at home. You know, I figured making it at home is a lot cheaper and I could have it anytime I want. So uh, that's what got me started. Just, just the taste of the mozzarella. It's the taste of it, but that, that was your why. Do yeah. you share the Ita this Italian delicacy with family and friends? I give, uh, I give a lot of mozzarella away, mostly. I don't sell anything, but I give it away to close friends, family, you know, and uh, I, want, I want their opinion, usually their, their opinion, and I always get a good, good result uh, from them. I'm but sure you do. For it, it's got to be good if you're not paying for it, because they don't get no more if they say it's <laughs> not any good. Delicious. Well, there's nothing better than making it yourself. Nothing and better than having it fresh, right out of the, right out of this, the, the pot. You know. We are we in a few moments. We're going to watch a video uh, about Dennis making the mozzarella. But before we do that, I'm going to uh, ask our audience out there. I have a poll, and you know, I'm just hoping the thing works. Let's give it a shot. Okay, um, this hopefully is up on your screen. Does everyone see it? Mm -hmm. Which country was the first to make mozzarella? I'll let everyone uh, vote. Put it out there for a little bit. Let's see what everyone has to say. Mm. Some of you are changing your mind. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. I, you know, I was so quick about it. Who Interesting. Knows? Okay. Well, the right, the, cor the correct answer is um, going to end the polling right now. Uh, a lot of, oh, it looks like a lot of people said Spain. And um, I'm going to share the results right now. Uh, do you all see it? And the correct answer is Italy. Wow. Yeah. All right. So that was my first poll and your first poll. And so we're going to have a few of these a little bit later, just for the fun of it. All about mozzarella. Okay. So what do you think? I think it's time to watch a video. Okay. So um, we are going to um, turn off our... Um, our video for the audience and let me share my screen and bring up the video. So you guys can turn off your screen and we're gonna watch um, kind of fun. So we taste yours, quid agatis, me and Vanessa Alexander Bird, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, my grandpa, AKA the genius will be making the today. Last week's video, I made the and today he'll be showing you the simple way. So let's get started. When we're sad that this video is not in line, but it's in English. Good morning, I'm the genius. I'm gonna show you the simple and easy way how to make mozzarella. No mess, no fuss. 
Okay, let's get started. Actually, the time is 1.38. Uh, let's get started and clean up this little area. Last week, Alexandra was using the big pot for boiling water, the little pot for scooping. We don't need that. We're not going to boil water today. I was going to use a small pot, but I'm afraid by making two and a half pounds of curd, it won't fit. So we're going to stick with the big, with the big pan. All right? We don't need the tomatoes in the advertisement no more, so we'll eliminate that. Although it's a good idea to drink a half a body Mary while you're making them, but you know, because it always comes out better. But we won't do that. All right, first step we're going to do is going to break up the curd. We're not using a knife. She used a knife last week. We're not using a knife this week. Gloves. Just to make everything nice and sanitary. The wooden spoon we're going to use. And the water. Last week we had no salt in the water. This week I'm using eight cups of water and two cups of kosher salt mixed up nice and nice and good. All right, now we're gonna start breaking the curd up real quickly. People are gonna be so surprised when this is done. You have to try it, you have to try this method at home because you'll be missing out a lot of things. You know, like sometimes you might wanna, you know, wake up in the middle of the night and have a piece of mozzarella, but there isn't any. This is gonna, make it so simple that you can get out of bed, make mozzarella in just a few minutes. The longest part of the making a mozzarella today is I'm going to be salting mine. I'll be salting it for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But we won't take up all the time. We'll just put it in a salt combination and take it from there. For about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, let's see. I just tried breaking up into small pieces. I don't think that small pot would have been big enough, so I'm glad I am using a bigger pot. And, oh, I hope you enjoy the nice music. This helps. It's an inspiration to make good mix it out with the Italian songs. Okay. Oh, one of my favorite songs. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna like wash the mozzarella. I have it on hot water, and we'll just let it soak a few minutes, mix it up a little bit. And let's have a time check on this. We started that at 1:42. Okay. As I said earlier, the water from the sink is about 140 degrees. That's good for warming that up. All right, we're finished with the tea water, but sit down because this is not the tea water. This is the water we're gonna to use to complete the curd situation. This thermometer right now says it's 180 degrees which is ample enough temperature to make the curd. We're gonna take like three ounces and pour it into the curd. And we start it at 12, we're gonna go down to like 10. And where's our famous wooden spoon? Okay, wooden spoon has nothing to do with it. Now we're gonna start mixing. Pop, you see, why do you have to use a wooden spoon? Because the wooden spoon doesn't uh, make the curd Stick to it. It doesn't contain the heat. As you can see, that it's already maybe starting to like gum, which is good. You use about three ounces of water, hot hot water, 180 degree water at a time. See, already 180 degrees. So you can touch it with your finger, and it's uh, not hot. So we try to frequently drain the water and add more water. See how nice it is? It's getting nice. Put a little more water in to cover it. 
started off with like 12 ounces of water, but we've got about seven left in the, in the pot. And it's really coming out good. Jab it. By doing this, by letting it stretch, when you put it in the hot water, penetrates the hot water, penetrates the curve to the inside, because you want the curve also to be like the same temperature all around, inside and out. Good shock here. Yeah. Hot water. Take the cutting board off. Oh no, let me get the cutting board over here. Let me get the cutting board over here. Alright, now that took us, I forgot, I lost track of two minutes. About 15 minutes. I'm gonna soak it in salt water and I wanna try different uh, different times. I'll take one if I wanna soak it for five minutes, I'll put one toothpick in. If I wanna soak it for ten minutes, I'll put two toothpicks in. That's not your three three toothpicks is fifteen minutes. But it depends on your taste and how and how uh, salty the water is. Like I said, two cups is salt, two cups of eight cups of eight cups of water. And a container that that's big. Okay, here's, uh, here's gonna be the no salt one. I'm just gonna throw that in here. 10 minutes is up, it's salted and everything. What we're gonna do is gonna wrap it. Some people use uh, saran wrap. I don't like saran wrap because it doesn't stick together too well. There's stuff out on the market called thin wrap that might look better. But I went to a, a, a local uh, restaurant that I constantly go to and I asked them if they could sell me a partial box of the professional wrapping material. And they did. They were nice enough to let me have a, a half a box of this. Here. I understand like a whole box, if you went online and bought this, it would cost about $25, $30. But it's well worth it because you have like 2,000 feet of uh, mm -hmm. wrap. And that's the last you a year. A lot of material. It's wrapped up. That's, that's the uh, salt and one. That's one salt and one. I think that this is a crazy idea doing it, but you know, the genius, that's what I'm here for. And if you don't believe me, try it yourself. Follow the instructions that we gave you and just try it yourself and then laugh. Take, take it from me, it's going to be the best mozzarella you ever tasted. Thank you so much. Bon voyage. Well, that's, a, that's French or what? <laughs> that's French. Auf <laughs> Wiedersehen. Is that French too? That's it. Thank you again. And enjoy. I think you got the picture, the whole story. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao again. Ciao. Arrivederci. I'm on the dirt Trying to stop the video. Uh. Okay, we're back, right? Yes. Uh, okay. All right, Dennis, you know what? Dennis has Let's invite Dennis back. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo, yeah. good performance. So first of all, let me just mention to uh, the folks that are watching today, and of course, thank you all for, for joining us. And you know, at the bottom of your screen, there is a chat function. And if you uh, have a question that you would like to ask, you know, you please feel free to write it in the chat. We'll see as time allows what we can get to, okay? And uh, we'll see what we can come up with. So before we even get to anything, let's let's do another poll just to check on your everyone's knowledge about uh, mozzarella, okay? So hang on a second. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna do, uh, we did this one already. 
Let's see if I can find another one. Okay. When was the term mozzarella first mentioned? Kind of an interesting one here. I'll be curious what everyone thinks. I'm going to guess. You're going to guess? All right, we'll give everyone another, you know, like another second or two. I see the results moving around, moving around, moving around. Okay, and we're going to end the polling. And the consensus seems to be uh, 1570. And uh, I'm going to share the results. I think that's correct, right? Good job, everyone. Okay, let's close that down. All right. So um, again, I, I mentioned about the chat feature. So Dennis, let's let's talk a little bit about cheese. So I noticed I, I noticed that your 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 system in the video it, it's definitely a little bit different than maybe how most people might doing it because you're actually using the water from your coffee maker rather than boiling water, correct? Correct. Yes, that's correct. And um, well, I, first of all, I like the fact that you're not going to burn your hands. That that's the first thought. But how did you how did you come up with that system? Actually, uh, you know, I was taking water temperatures as, as I was learning and I was doing them with the pot. And uh, I found out that measuring the, the temperature in the pot, boiling it uh, and comparing it to the, to the water from the coffee pot, it was approximately the, the same. So I said, why do I have to start using gas and watching bubbles and, and everything? I just turn on a coffee pot and it does, it does everything for me. It takes the guesswork out. That is approximately 180 degrees. And when you do make mozzarella, uh, I was informed that 170 degrees is a very good degrees, uh, amount of good degrees to, uh, to make it in. It's not too hot, not too cold, and you don't burn yourself. Well, uh, that's a pretty important factor, by the way. If you, if you uh, ever see anyone making mozzarella with that boiling water and they've got their bare hands in there, it's, it's a little bit scary. So I'm thinking your method, I like your method a lot better. That's for sure. Now, I also noticed now, of course, you're you have you are using fresh curd. Yes. Rather than making it yourself. And we'll let you know, people, you, you know, you know, you can you can do it either way. But um, where do you where might somebody purchase fresh curd if they wanted to try this system? Well, I go to one of these Italian specialty stores where they make a lot of uh Raviolis, Monegat, and uh, and I and they usually have curd on 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 sale for for the public, and I buy it from them. I sometimes have to go to as a last resort, go to the restaurant and ask them if they have any extra curd, and they'll they'll sell me some. Oh, all right, well that's nice. Some supermarkets, if you go into a supermarket and they're making uh, it says homemade mozzarella, maybe you could purchase some uh, from them. But the the best deal is to try to go to one of these Italian American stores where they, where they specialize in this, and you probably get the best price. I I could pay from three dollars to five dollars. You know. Oh, that. And that's a big variation. That you know what? You know what I think I'll do for our listeners, Don. I th I'm after this is done. I'm gonna go now. We're of course we're in, based in Monmouth County, New Jersey, and I'm gonna Google where to buy curd. And there's going to be a follow-up email and I'll share it with everyone so that if you're interested, at least you'll have a, a place that where you, you could go. But I, I think your idea of going to a deli is probably a great idea. I, I would think they might, they might be good enough to, to sell that to you. Yeah. Now, how long does fresh curd last? It lasts around 10 days. I was told, okay. don't, try, don't try to keep it uh, more than 10 days. It might start uh, turning green on you, you know, moldy and all that. So uh, keep it in the refrigerator for 10, day, for 10 days. But uh, I, I use it up so fast that I don't even, I don't even get to that point. <laughs> That's nice. So how much, how much curd are you using to make about a pound of, of mutts? About a pound, uh, you're going to use maybe 18 to 20 ounces because you lose a lot of weight in the process. It, remember, curd is milk. And when you do the process, the, the boiling and, and the mixing, 
that milk inside is going to ooze out and you're going to turn the curd, which is a semi-solid in, into a, like a liquid form. And it's, it's going to lose, it's going to lose the weight, the, the weight of the water. So if you started out with a pound of curd, thinking you're going to get a pound of cheese out of it, you're okay. So definitely, all right, that makes, and that it, makes it, sense. It that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Ounces, 12 ounces. I think it depends on a curd too, you know, from, from day to day, you know, it's not, it's not, standard a standard uh, percentage that you're going to lose all right so but some days may be more more or some days may be less of how much you lose <laughs> based on the weather <laughs> you never know so i noticed also in your video that you started out you had a bowl i think you said there were eight cups of water and then two cups uh two cups of uh, kosher salt well, yes, yes. So the, you're you're using that just kind of to once you form the balls, that's where you're putting them. Yes, correct, and that gives it the salt and gives it the taste. It, Wait, so you you're not salting the the other water at all. It's just when you're when you're when you're finished up. You, when you're finished, yeah. The water that you're boiling is not salted water at all. And uh, is is that a lot? I I don't have a good feel for it, but is two cups of salt is that a lot of salt? Does your cheese wind up coming up on the salty side? Well, this is why I say sometimes uh, when I mentioned five minutes, 10 minutes, and 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, you did. Five minutes with one toothpick. And it's all, all a matter of taste. You toothpick. know, yeah. when, if you make it at home, you could try five minutes, you could try 10 minutes, you could try 15 minutes to see which one you like the most. If you don't put enough of salt in the water, you might want to put it in for 20 minutes or add more salt and, and lower the, and, and lower the time uh, limit uh, on doing it. That's just a matter of taste. That's what I started off with. And I usually stick. I, I usually uh, usually stick to that. Uh, two cups of salt and a, like a pretty good sized salad bowl. Fill it up three quarters of the way, and the mozzarella actually will float because the density of the salt water is is more than than fresh water. So the mozzarella floats to the top. If oh, you don't use salt, like the, salty like the ocean. Yeah, as they would say. You know? All but right. The, Salt so the, yeah. to me is, is, is better than no salt. Well, the thing is that really it's a pretty bland cheese. If it doesn't have salt, there, there isn't going to be much flavor. I don't, right? enjoy, it. <laughs> I don't enjoy no salt. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can imagine that no salt doesn't seem very, um, doesn't seem too exciting. It's not now, that salty either. It's not like taking a, a, a salt shaker and, and throwing a whole bunch of, it, it isn't that salty. It's not that you're going to go, Ugh, you know. It just has that extra little taste of flavor to it. Well, that makes sense. And now when you, when you, um, when you uh, form the balls, and I guess you can make them any size you want, obviously, whatever, whatever your taste is. Yeah, yeah. And the, so you put them, you're putting them in the water. And is that also helping them kind of, is that that water is on the cool side or cold? No, it's cold. That was it's cold, cold. Water. I, I keep the salt water. I keep the salt water covered. And I could keep it in a cabinet. I don't have to refrigerate it or nothing for like four or five uses. You don't, that's something you don't have to throw away every day. Oh. If it curdles on top, try to get the curdle off. I use, I use the coffee filter to, to get the curd off and I, I, could, I could use it over again, but I don't generally do that. But you could, you could make about four or five, uh, uh, I'm losing five. my way. Five. Four or five times, you know, before you have to really replace it. And the salt, the kosher salt is not that expensive. If you don't want to store it, you throw it away. Well, that's going to be a really nice briny mixture if you use it right a, a few times over. I would think it would be pretty delicious. I I have no trouble with it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. If, if it doesn't, I, I don't ever remember losing its taste, you know. Now, what about, I know. Now, of course, you were you um, you put it in the water, and it sits in the water for a time. Whatever that's to taste, and I noticed that you wrap it in you know tightly in, in the plastic. Yes. Now, what's the now? Some people maybe store it in the water. I see it sometimes in the supermarket, right? You know, you see, so what's what is there a difference there? Well, when you when you uh, in the supermarkets, when you put it in the water, whether it's salt water or, or fresh water. It holds the shape. The pressure around it from the water will hold the shape. Oh, if all right. You don't put it in the water, it's going to flatten out maybe like a pancake, you know? But they eventually wrap it. They will when they, okay. Wrap it. I, never, I, I never seen in any store mozzarella that wasn't wrapped. 
and that helps. And you wrap it nice and tight. I guess it keeps it fresher, you know, too, and, and allows you to refrigerate and keep it in the refrigerator for a long time. Now, you keep it in the refrigerator. Uh, again, if, if the week or two, maybe it's going to start to turn green too. Like, like well, any, if it if it yeah. lasts that long, <laughs> I'm not thinking good. it's not going to last that long. Well, no, no. You start, you start eating, it's like it's like a bag of potato chips. You can't stop. <laughs> and do you ever freeze it? Can you freeze that you freeze, freshly made? You can freeze mozzarella, but you can't freeze curd. You don't you don't freeze curd when you buy. Oh, curd. all right, good to know. All right, you can freeze mozzarella, I guess, as long as you want. It doesn't change like, the like, texture. Like, like anything else, you know, you freeze it, it's, it's good, you know. It doesn't change the texture? Well, but if I take it out of the freezer, I let, it, I let it sit for quite a while, room temperature. And I'll take a pot of hot water, either from the sink at 130 degrees, or cook up another batch of hot water from the coffee pot, and throw it in there, wrapped, of course, and... Uh, let it get back to like a, a very warm temperature, 120 degrees, close to that. But you, you let, because when you slice it, it's still going to be cold inside if you, if you don't leave it in the hot water long enough. And uh, you, don't lose, you don't lose much there. It's usually the same as, as though you just freshly made it. Let me just mention that I see there's a question about freezing it, which we, we talked about. And uh, they're asking, uh, can, can you just put it in tap water or does it have to be distilled water? But Dennis, you put it right in tap water, correct? I didn't quite understand that question. Oh, when, uh, when you added your salt to the water, that was tap water, correct? Tap water, yes, just plain That was just tap water. Yeah. Okay. And someone else is asking about watch rewatching the video. And what I will do when I send out, I'll send everyone an email and I will send you the link so that you can rewatch the video. And that way you can, Sounds, yeah, yeah you can, good. you know, kind of get, I, cause again, I, I, I'm drawn to your technique because you're not using boiling water. Yeah. Well, if, if you're going to boil water, you got to watch the pot and the bubble, the bubbles on the bottom, very, very small. That's usually a hint as you're getting close to the right degrees. You don't want the water to boil like you're making pasta. Or oh, like okay. That. Don't let it boil like that because uh, they told me the, the, the curd will explode. Whatever they mean by that, I don't I have no idea. But when you see all those little, little, little bubbles on the very bottom, you're close, you're close to the temperature, very close to the temperature. If it starts to boil, lower the gas. Now, let's just go back to the curd for a moment, because you said you don't recommend that you would freeze curd. So that makes me think that I wouldn't be buying 10 pounds of curd no. and, have, and having it hang out. I would want enough that I would use it, you know, fairly quickly, right? Right. Okay. I usually buy five pounds, uh, try to get five pounds. Sometimes when I cut it in the store, it might come a little bit more, it might come a little bit less, but I'm comfortable with five pounds and I make two and a half, three pounds at a time. You know, I make I make it one day and two days later, I'll, I'll use up what I have and uh, do it over again. Donna, that's a lot of mozzarella. <laughs> if you're going to do that, if you, if you want to buy a, maybe a 40 pound block and you're going to make it every day, <laughs> then you know, buy, buy the 40 pound block. But I usually just go, you know, I, I try to stick with about five or six pounds. Now, someone is asking, can you use oat milk or any milk alternative. And I, I mean, uh, I think the answer there is if you're using fresh curd, you're not using milk. You're not using milk at all. You're not, right. You're just using curd, curd, curd in the water. Thousands. But if you were gonna make mozzarella from absolute scratch where you make the curd, then you would, be need, then you would need to use actual, some sort of milk. And I don't know if you could use oat milk, actually. And maybe that's something. I've heard of making sheep's milk, goat's milk. Nobody ever heard of making mozzarella out of that. Yeah. And you have to add a lot of enzymes, I understand, to make curd from, from fresh milk or, or whole milk. It's whole milk that you make with. And I never looked into the process. It could be a difficult process. It might be a long process. But uh, it's easier. It's just easier for me to it watch. It seems so. You know, I I have to tell you that I did I did watch a video where they they made the curd from scratch, and you need two basic things. I mean, you need milk, yes, but you need rennet, and you need uh, is it acidic acidic acid? To honestly, you could I I see you could buy them on um, Amazon because of course you can. <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know, what it feels so much easier to just if you can just start with the fresh curd 
and just go that way, you're saving yourself a lot of time. And it doesn't seem all that complicated. Well, of course, you, you've got the system down. Don and I would probably have a little complicated situation. Uh, We've not done it. I've watched it, but I've not done it. But I'm inspired to um, inspired to give it a shot after seeing the video, which yeah. I've never watched an awful lot, just trying to get the whole uh, the process. Yeah, just on this topic, though, Dennis makes it look so easy. Yeah, what are some of those common, common mistakes that people need to avoid, Dennis? Uh, maybe boiling water too too uh, too hot. Maybe oh, not enough. Too hot. No. Yeah. It's like I just try to give temperatures. Not everybody has a thermometer at home where they where they can measure the temperatures. And this is this is why I'm using a coffee pot and and a, and a sink water. Okay. I, don't need, I don't need to use my thermometer. But to get back to the question before that Andrea gave me, making your own curry. This might be people who own restaurants and they have the facilities to make it and store it just to save them a few bucks or they might be using a lot of it and you know buying it already made or right. they might just make it themselves. That, that, that could be it. But I never looked into make, making curd myself because the, 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 what you have to add to it and what the process is behind it. Is it a long process or short process? I don't know. It looks like a long process to me. Well, the process of just- Come up with a solid block. Right. Know, that right. Take, that's gotta take a while. Now, I noticed that, so you, ha you had, a, a, you know, that chunk of curd and you just broke it up. So it doesn't have to be, it's not like you have to chunk it into little pieces. You just um, can break it up by hand. See, when I went back to the beginning, the restaurant gave me this here thing. It was, looked like a checkerboard made out of stainless steel wire and he pushed it through. Okay. I Most get, of us don't have that. I get, I get the same results as breaking it up with my hand, <laughs> you know? I thought about going out and looking for one and buy one of those things, but I, what's the sense? You know, I don't have I don't have to go out and buy that. Now I also noticed, and I'm sure everyone else did. You 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 rinsed off the the curd. You know, you you put the water on, you let it sit a moment, then you spilled the water out, and you added you added additional water. That's what the processing. You, That's what are you doing? Uh, that what is that? Well, I'm edging on the curd to. to start to get bubbly, uh, bub yeah, the bubble gum is, it's, you know, the bubble gum. Well, like you describe it as gummy, like it's getting yeah. ready to be stretchy. Yeah, I do that with the, with the, with the, with the sink water, just so it starts to, to gum. When it starts to gum up, then you could, you know, dump out the water, get as much water out. And then I start using 180 degree temperature water and that makes the process go a lot faster. And you, you Usually with the, with the uh, coffee pot water, three times, three ounces, four ounces at a time, you're going to be finished. Be, you're going to be finished. It's going to be the consistency that you want, like bubble gum and flowing you know, freely be, before you run out of the, the coffee pot water. Yeah. I, you know, I noticed that the process was relatively fast from so start to finish. Once, once it starts to bubble, you know, using the sink water, not bubble, but, I, you know, when I say bubble, I, you know, when it starts sticking together, once it starts that, then you could use, then you could use the hot water and it goes very fast. You'd be surprised. And so you, uh, you're going to be eating this before you I'll know. Let's just get out of the camera for a second. Okay. I'm going to look for, all right. I have a little towel here, okay? When I lift the, the mozzarella out of the, out of the pot, once, I pick it up and I wrap it around my hand about four times. Uh, that's not in the video. And then I make the ball. Try to make the ball as nice as you can and immediately throw it in the salt water or, the, or the, just the fresh sink water. That's the way I, that's the way I make the ball. By wrapping, around, by wrapping around your hand a couple of times, three or four right. times. The more you, the more you wrap it around your hand, the bigger the mozzarella is going to be. You know, you might from six ounces, you might go up to ten, you might go up to twelve. But that's how, that's how I start making a ball. I guess maybe you you make meatballs the same way. You know, with the whole you don't have to meatballs. stretch them. Yeah, you make the meatball <laughs> in your hand and you squish it around. Probably the same technique. So I noticed that um, as as you were adding water, spilling it out, kind of you know uh, working it out with the spoon, that the consistency completely changes and it becomes this smooth and shiny. Uh, it, it transforms completely. So fast, so fast, yeah. 
And yeah. is that's the point when you know that you can start stretching it out when it starts well, when to transform? Any lump, when you don't see any more lumps in, in it, then you know it's all mixed together really, really nice. And if you want to give it a last shot of hot water, if you have hot water left over, you want to give it a last shot. Too much hot water isn't going to hurt it. You know, at, at that stage, you know, just makes just makes it nice and more flexible. Dennis, I have a couple more questions for you. Uh, do you prefer to eat your mozzarella hot or cold? Well, not hot. I let it. I let it sit on a counter a couple hours because it's gonna. It's going to remain pretty hot inside. It, it's wrapped and it's gonna. You know, it's gonna stay hot for, for for quite a while. You know. Yeah, you that know, makes sense. Two yeah. hours, three hours. You know, sometimes you, know, you just take it and you cut it and. You're not going to burn your mouth, that's for sure. But a couple is it good at room temperature? I bet it is. I leave I leave it out sometimes overnight, oh. and, nothing, and nothing okay. happens. It's just as good the next morning. And then if I don't eat it, eat it all up, then I'll throw it in the refrigerator. And then do you eat it cold? No, I'll no. throw it. In the, not, I'll throw it in the cup of hot water again, and warm okay. it up again. <laughs> Oh, you know what, guy? Let's let's try another poll question. Let's see let's see how everyone's doing. Let me launch another poll. I like my mozzarella hot. <laughs> Here's another question. Okay. Which milk is mozzarella made of? Buffalo sheep or horse milk? Here's the poll. Let's see what everyone has to say. All right. I'm going to say, I'm saying buffalo. <gasps> That's the closest thing to a cow. Well, I'm happy nobody is saying horse. <laughs> Okay, let me end the polling. Okay, yes, most of us knew that it was um, buffalo milk. Mm -hmm. But is it ever made of sheep's milk? I was told nobody ever heard of making it with sheep's milk or, or goat's milk. Goat's milk, sorry, you won't they make goat's milk without. Even in, in this country when we make, well, I guess if you're making it from home, if you're making it completely from scratch, you might not have access to buffalo milk. Well, maybe if you live in a country that has a lot of goats and no cows. Um, I'm thinking New Jersey, probably not so much. <laughs> we might have to just settle for milk, regular milk. Whole That's milk. kind of interesting. What is, Dennis, how do you, what is your favorite thing about you know, to, to serve it. What do you, what do you like to do? Well, I like it mostly with the roasted peppers, you know, and uh, just tomato, tomato with uh, with mozzarella. Of course, it goes good on pizza. We know that pizza is not pizza without mozzarella. And my granddaughter here, she likes she likes it on the garlic bread. So I've been mm -hmm. making garlic bread, and I and I throw some mozzarella on top and put it put it in a broiler to you know to cook and uh, yeah, from there. Speaking of your granddaughter, she created a beautiful introduction to your video. Uh, is, is it a family affair when you make mozzarella? No, I'd rather do it myself. Really? <laughs> I think in that big Italian home, you'd all get together. <laughs> I got better off working by myself. Yeah. Too many cooks spoil the broth. I get it. Or the mozzarella. Or the mozzarella. How long have you been making mozzarella? Oh, well, I would say... A year, almost, I would say a year as, as November to November. I started last November. 20 years to me, I would have believed you. Yeah, no, I started making it uh, last, no, last November. Yeah. You, you, you kind of got it, I think, for sure. I think so. Now, I somebody's asking, um, the amount that you made, how much would that, how much, what would be the cost to make about a pound? But... I'm thinking well, that you buy you buy the, you buy the curd so could cost you any place from maybe three dollars to uh, to five dollars. You may find some place that even sells it cheaper. Yeah, but I I don't know where I buy it for three. I'm sure they're getting it for less than that. Oh, we, they might yeah. be paying a dollar, dollar fifty, two dollars for it, you know. And that of course they're going to make something. But how much is the same size mozzarella one of them in the store ready made? They they, they sell that by by the pound, and I'm assuming it's gonna be, you're paying them maybe like, we'll say an average of 20 cents an ounce. $8. Okay, $8. I'm not talking to you, honey. $8. And you buy it in the store, it's like $8 a pound. So that's maybe yeah. like 40 cents, that's probably 40 cents an ounce, sort of like that, if not even more. Right. 
So the, the ingredients are actually very humble because it's the curd, it's salt, kosher salt, and, and water. I mean, that's kind of the whole thing, right? Okay. The loving care. Well, the loving care is priceless. We cannot put a price on that. No, that's that's it. So it's the kosher salt. If you you, you got salted, or or just the curd itself, you're paying a few bucks on, I guess, on on water. You're being you know, charged for the water, but that's but obviously, it. if you're buying it in the store, you're you you know certainly you're paying a lot more than just buying the price of the curd. Yeah, well, they have they have their overhead too, you know. That's, I don't I don't I don't add my time. To the price of making it. No. Now, Dennis, do you ever add anything like an add-in to your mozzarella? Like put basil or any other? Donna, do you ever have that? No. I never did either. I, I wonder if that's purist. a thing. You're, I, a purist. You're a purist. I tried once with what I had left over prosciut. And I wasn't happy with the prosciut mixing with the mozzarella because I didn't really place it correctly where, where it was attractive. <laughs> like so, I didn't try it again. But you could, you know, they make it with prosciutto. I guess you could throw a piece of salami in there, and anything, anything that you like, you know. Would you salami. mix it in uh, when the curd starts to soften? As you roll it. Oh, as you roll pick it. Up, okay. Pick it up, you know, like, and it's real gooey. And then you take a piece of uh, prosciutto, put it, put on it, then then just start rolling it. So it looks like uh, like one of those log cakes that you see with the the different colors in it. So it looks something like that when you slice it. Well, I'm guessing like you, Donna, most people are purists <laughs> when it comes to their- uh, Why don't mozzarella. you ask the poll, ask the question, chat people, anybody uh, put anything in there? Yeah, does anybody? Yeah, I'd be curious. I would like to know that too. And yeah. I'm curious, anybody out there, are you are you making mozzarella now? We'd like, you know, we'd like to, we'd like to hear from you if you that are. Would nice. That'd be nice to know also. And you know what, while we're waiting for them to maybe give us an answer, let's let's do another poll mm -hmm. because there's a particular question. I gotta see if I can find uh, it. Stump us now? Um, no, just, a, you know, it's like a, a point of interest what people are doing. <clears throat> All right, we did this one, wait. Okay. So what is the name for smoked mozzarella? Three different choices here. I didn't know this one. Did you know this one, Donna? I know from the Italian, the second oh, word. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we're not fooling anybody, all right? I don't know the process. I don't know the process of smoked mozzarella. <laughs> Put it on a barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's another way to go. All right, I'm going to end the polling because I think, let me share the results, that just about all of you yeah. got the answer correct. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't think I even ever had smoked mozzarella. It's probably delicious. I've had I had it a few times. It's it's not bad. It's not bad. You get you taste more the smoke than anything else. One thing that I, when I was looking through all sorts of information, just a, a, a point of interest with uh, mozzarella cheese is that it's actually a very low fat cheese, very low. So it's probably one of the more healthier cheeses that uh, you, might, you might eat. So that's good to know, right? Yeah. One of the healthier ones. Yeah. Okay, we didn't, I didn't hear from anybody out there if anyone is making uh, mozzarella cheese uh, yes. now, but all right. Well, let me ask this. Now watching this, would anyone try to make mozzarella at home? Let's see. Oh, you would. Oh, wait, we got a yeah. All right. Yes, 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 yes. Two people, Andrea and uh, yeah. Patrice. <laughs> and I have another. Oh, look here, Mike. What does that say? Nothing in okay. my Dress Nothing in my mind. I, dr I dress it on the uh, on the outside. Uh, eggplant, roasted pepper, sliced tomatoes. Not making it now. I will try it in the future. Yeah. Right? I mean, here's the th my biggest takeaway from talking to you, Dennis, and watching the video many times. It's not difficult. And for some reason, I, I, I thought that it was, you know, Donna, I thought it was very mysterious. Like, so did I. who would do this? Who would do this in their home? When I first but, heard about it, I said, I've got to see this. It's not, yeah. me it's not messy either. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, it, do, it doesn't seem bad. And the fact is that the, the biggest obstacle for some people will be where, where are you going to buy um, the curd? But I told you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little Googling on that and I'm going to send everybody uh, whatever, whatever I can find out. I'll share it with you. We have two more people that would try it. Uh, the Siebers, somebody said their granddaughter would try it. Oh, somebody, Eileen is saying mozzarella is pronounced differently. Yes, it is. I learned in, a, in my Italian classes, it's mozzarella, but maybe I'm not correct. This, can someone uh, correct me on that? Mozzarella, I see she's got sometimes mozzarella. <laughs> if anybody knows the proper pronunciation, you can write it in. Mozzarella. mozzarella. And somebody's asking, do they sell part skim curd? I don't know. Is is curd full fat, Dennis? I don't know. It's yeah. uh, I know it's made from whole milk, and I, I don't know. Well, if it, all right, it's made from whole milk, so it's. I'm going to say it's not a skim product. No, I, I, I. Next time I go down and do some shopping, I'll ask them. We will have to. We that we will have. We're going to have to do a little research. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be very curious. Well, for you out there who decide that you are going to uh, make this at home, we'd like to hear a little follow-up from you. That would be fun, right? Yes, it would. That would, would be fun. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, gosh, Dennis, much appreciated for all your info. It was fun, it was fun to talk about it. Who doesn't like to talk about food, right? Mm, it's well, if you like food, yeah, certain types of food. One, one of the panelists asked that you uh, remember to post the access to the absolutely, video. Absolutely, I will post, yes, absolutely, I will post the link on uh, YouTube. So expect your viewing on this video to go up, up, up. No, Dennis, that's fun though. I think Dennis did a great job and thank you, Granddaughter, too, also for that video. Yes. That's really wonderful. Yes. We, Dennis, we, thank uh, you very much. Much appreciated. And um, really, you know, the art of co cooking is an art like any art. You know, we're all about creative conversations and, you know, making people aware, right, Donna, of all the yes. different art forms and Absolutely. cooking, you know, cheese making. It's it's just another form of art, guys. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You, you definitely prove that with um I'm, I'm psyched now to locate cheese curd so that I can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, Palio, if you find a place that sells Palio products, they, they make they they make uh, good mozzarella. And I guess, you know, like you said, you go online, you, you'll find you'll find wholesalers, ask, ask them how they sell it. You know, but I, I, I do like your idea about going maybe like to your favorite local deli, your favorite local Italian deli, because every Italian deli is making it, I'm sure they probably sell you a little bit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dennis. It's been a pleasure. Mine too. I enjoyed it. Okay. I, made, I made it through this. <laughs> yes, oh, you great. did. You did. I know. Somebody just right now, I'm hungry. I know. And, I'm yeah, specifically yeah. hungry for uh, mozzarella cheese. <laughs> yeah. Run out, run out to the store and buy some curd. <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to do that. We have, we have a thank you to all the panelists from Emma, which is very nice, his granddaughter. Thank you. That was very thank sweet. You, so some of our other art thing uh, uh, coming attractions. Yes, Donna, do you let me put? I have another slide to put up with coming attractions. Okay. And Donna, if you want to, please do a dance. Oh this no! Aspect Just of tell wellness, them about coming uh, attractions. Because go ahead, Donna. To get you want to, me to tell them um, about it? I to couldn't get hear to you. Nutrition. Yeah, please share the, the info really on the slide about coming about. attractions. So we're not very successful with just hearing about nutritional advisement. Oh, that's your. Um, okay. I oh, went I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. You do okay. That. So walk us through some of that yeah. information. I hear it again, so, but it's okay. Um, Can everyone hear um, me? Just quickly. Yes. There appears to be a correlation, by the way, between behavior you change hear that, Andrea? or compliance when I it don't. either knows what, what yeah, the, somebody else is so speaking. through this skill improvement and, and a much I deeper have a video on maybe. which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, all right. Well, I don't, I don't know sense where that people, you start to see people. Why don't you take that board down and I'll just tell them about it. Okay, everyone. So I have to do this now for my brain. But uh, next month for the uh, December 3rd, we have someone named um, Julia Mensch. 
And she is the most talented quilter I, I've ever seen because it's modernistic, it's bright, it's colorful. She, she has slides, she'll uh, be speaking through it and um, telling you all about her process. Very, very creative person. And that's December 3rd, same time on Creative Conversations. For January, we have a wonderful local artist here in Monmouth County. Her name is Tracy Witter. She's a multi-talented artist, artist, and she will be demoing right in person for you in a video um, how to paint an acrylic painting. And I think we'll be doing a winter scene. So it should be nice. really, really cool. We have some other things coming up and we're trying to stretch that word of art from theater to the therapeutic, um, performing arts, visual arts, sculpture, architecture. I mean, it could be anything. And here we brought in the art of Italian cooking. So any ideas you have, we're open to ideas also. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You know what, Donna? I'm going to read our little mission statement. So everyone, maybe maybe our listeners will have some ideas of some other creative people that right. you can send our way. So Creative Conversations is going to be a series of virtual programming because, well, you know why. A collaboration of creatives where like, where like minds meet and share a broad view of the arts, the expression and power of art, as well as human creativity, skill, and imagination. It focuses on raising awareness while communicating through the many forms of art that include visual, performing, literary, recreational, therapeutic, cultural, and more. So we're, we want people to understand that art is just not painting. Art comes in, right, many, many forms. And we just thought it would be a wonderful opportunity to um, share that with everyone. So that's what we're doing. And first, what a, first Thursday of every month. Right, thank you for that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if, if you're registered for this, you'll, you'll see flyers, you'll see our info, and um, we'd love to hear, you know, we'd love to get some feedback on maybe some, some people that might interest you, or even, um, hey, Donna, maybe there's some artists out there and you'll let us know. I yeah. will, I'm on the search, I'm calling all creatives. Yes, Donna is, <laughs> Donna is on the search. Good. Well, thank you all. Thank you all for being with us today. Dennis, again. Thank you, Dennis. Um, thank you, Linda. Hi, Donna. <laughs> it is a, a family adventure. It is. Okay. This was the quietest time of day there was in a long time. Donna, he has had uh, goat's milk with today. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, we're all going to have to like leave and eat something right thank now. Thank you. Think. Okay, well, thank you all. Bye, everyone. Have a great day, everyone. Till next time. Bye. Bye, yes. Dennis. Thank you. Bye, Dennis. Yep. I'll see you if I don't hear from you again.